is Bucket Brigade Delay analog? Simple enough of a question, though I'm sure more than a handful of viewers are forcefully typing out their answers right this very second. Obviously, there's a reason this is called the MXR M234 analog chorus. <laughs> There's a reason why this is the rubberneck analog delay. But there's also a pretty solid case for maybe why they aren't. One of the most clear arguments being on Phil Taylor's The History of Delay page, which has a ton of thoughtful and insightful information. I've provided a link down in the description. On that page, he posits that bucket brigade delays are almost universally and inaccurately referred to as being analog, but they're not. Strictly speaking, BBD, Bucket Brigade Delay, is a hybrid of digital and analog technology. And if one of your eyebrows is slightly higher than the other right now, well then let's go a little bit deeper. Let's start by establishing the load-bearing aspects of this larger question. First, what is digital? Then, what is analog? And how does bucket brigade delay work? And if we know all that, we should be able to formulate a fairly thoughtful conclusion. Although, spoiler alert, the answer is no. Or yes, depending on how you see it. Let's hit up Miriam Webster and start with some definitions. For digital, I'd say definitions two and four are our relative embodiments here, composed of data in the form of especially binary digits, those being ones and zeros, and relating to an audio recording method in which sound waves are represented digitally as on magnetic tape so that in the recording, wow and flutter are eliminated and background noise is reduced. So, it's a representation of an audio signal without the artifacts associated with actual physical tape in a data form, preferably in binary digits. There's also definition number seven, but thankfully, I'm pretty sure that doesn't apply here. If we look up analog, we find relating to or being a mechanism or device in which information is represented by continuously variable physical quantities. That continuously variable part is truly important because it resembles what we see in the real world, continuity. If I roll this ball from here to here, like so, I am 100% confident that it existed at every possible location in this one dimensional line between here and here. Even if we broke out an electron scanning microscope and used Ant-Man technology and made a billion little marks on here, there existed a moment in time where this ball was precisely over every possible mark we could possibly make in here because it moved continuously. Ignoring any argument that time is a fake construct or what exactly over top the mark means, let's assume you see what I'm getting at here. Compared with digital, which samples various physical aspects and then represents them numerically in a way that can be recreated as a representation of that real world event or object. And by the way, I'm fully aware of the irony of appearing in a digital format and demonstrating analog concepts. That's not lost on me. The digital representation, though, of what's actually happening here is something we should talk about. It's being recorded on my digital camera at 30 frames a second. It's not continuous. If we go frame by frame, the ball was here, and then it was here. But our brain has no problem filling in the gap. So we see a ball rolling, not awkwardly jumping 30 times to get from here to here. 
In audio, instead of video frames, we have audio samples. So we have a sample rate, which might be 44.1 kilohertz or 44,000 samples per second, and a bit depth of 16 bits, meaning each sample can be expressed as a numerical value up to about 32,000 positive or negative. That's what's known as CD quality sound, compact disc. And that's been the standard for pretty high quality audio for a number of decades now. But there's no digital resolution so high that it is truly continuous by definition. It's still made up of little samples. So with digital, we get high quality media consistently with no degradation but that's also the highest the quality will ever be since we have a finite number of samples. But take film shot on actual film, especially those on 65 or 70 millimeter film like West Side Story, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and more recently The Hateful Eight. As technology advances, we'll be seeing 4K, 8K, probably even 16K transfers of those films for decades to come because we can always go deeper until we're looking at individual silver halide crystals, which are the things that make film light sensitive. So what's going on in a bucket brigade delay? Let's start with what's a bucket brigade. As legend has it, it's a process by which firefighters would form a line and pass buckets from a water source along the line of firefighters to the firefighters up front, rather than having everyone just run back and forth, filling up and dumping their buckets. It's like a human conveyor belt. In a bucket brigade delay, we've got stages, which are capable of holding a tiny, tiny slice or a sample of audio and passing it onto the neighboring stage. Those stages are made up of teeny, tiny capacitors, like really teeny, teeny, tiny, which are capable of holding a teeny, tiny electrical charge. Now, one of the earliest and most popular Bucket Brigade Delay, or BBD, chips is the MN3005, and the data sheet for the MN3005 says it has 4,096 stages, and that the longest signal delay is about 205 milliseconds at a clock frequency of 10 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz is 10,000 hertz, meaning that in the span of one second, we've got 10,000 clock cycles. Think of a clock cycle as a boundary upon which things can happen. So if we were playing a game of checkers with a one hertz clock cycle, pieces could only move once a second and only on those one second clock boundaries, which is an absolutely ridiculous scenario, but it's the best I could come up with. The point being, the clock pulse is the drum beat for our electrical components, and that drum beat is set by a cousin of the Bucket Brigade Delay chip, the oscillator. The oscillator's job is to pulse at a set frequency, and as we learned, we can get about 205 milliseconds with a 10 kilohertz clock frequency, so let's go with that. 10,000 clock cycles per second, 4,096 stages, 205 milliseconds? Well, the chip is actually using the pulse and the inverse pulse from the oscillator to drive it, so we're moving it two stages per clock pulse. 205 milliseconds is a pretty short delay, but more than enough for choruses and flanders. And if we look inside a delay like the JHS Panther Cub, we see a whole bunch of Bucket Brigade chips to build it up to a full second. What's Pretty neat is that if you look at the MN3005 datasheet, at the bottom we'll find a nice illustration of exactly how to wire it up to make a handy little reverberation effect generation circuit. And in fact, on the very next graphic, it gives us a pattern to use for the circuit board etching in case we actually want to make this thing. Maybe we'll attempt that project someday. Could be a lot of fun. Something else to consider is that we can't just feed a raw pickup output straight into a Bucket Brigade chip. It needs to be compressed and filtered before going in there. Compressed because we don't have a whole lot of headroom to play with in those tiny little capacitors, and filtered because high frequencies tend to create weird, unpleasant artifacts when passed directly into the chip. So the signal gets squished down and it has its highs rolled off before going in. 
Then on the way out, we try our best to reconstitute it. First, the signal goes through another filter to try and eliminate the clock noise, which was introduced by the signal getting all chopped up and put back together. Then it's run through an expander to try and restore the dynamics. That whole process is not invisible. And the filtering process adds a bit of lo-fi character to the sound, which is why Bucket Brigade has its own soft, warm, however you want to describe it, sound, and why the Electroharmonics Analogizer features a Bucket Brigade delay, even if it's only a couple milliseconds long. But is even the name Analogizer a horrible, horrible lie sold to you by Big Bucket Brigade? So the case for Bucket Brigade being digital is that it's a sampling of the input signal along that clock rate, same as digital audio recorders or cameras. But the case for it being analog is that the samples themselves can be anything at all. There's an infinite resolution between zero and the maximum value. Well, are film strips analog? The exposure is analog, like coming in through a lens, hitting those silver halide crystals suspended in gelatin binder on a glass substrate, and the medium itself is continuous in nature, but those exposures are a sampling done at anywhere from typically 24 to 30 hertz. That's our frames per second. So I think it's a fairly apt comparison. Maybe it's like asking if a tea kettle full of boiling water is solid, liquid, or gas, where we need to consider different components in context for each answer. Or is it more like akin to asking if a hot dog is a sandwich? Or how many holes does a straw have? Maybe we should just settle on mechanical analog for things like tape and oil can delays, digital for applications where sound gets turned into actual ones and zeros, and for stuff in the middle, solid state, non-mechanical, non-binary sample-based. I told you this wouldn't make anybody happy, but it gives us something to think about. Will it make us better musicians? Yeah, probably not. Will it be information that sits in our brains and bothers us for the rest of our lives? Like knowing that in a lot of movies and TV shows, the cars have no headrests? Yeah, probably something like that. Either way, I thank you for letting me get this off my chest, and hopefully you found it enlightening and not very infuriating. I normally do relatively long-form video demos of individual pedals, but... My combination home office studio is currently all set up and a mess because I'm filming some other non-pedal related recordings, and I thought maybe it was time for a deep dive video. Anyway, let me know what you think, and if this is your kind of jam, make sure you hit subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.